Hey everyone, so just before this challenge video starts properly with the greetings and everything else, I do need to say a few things. Firstly, I make a major mistake very early on, which thankfully doesn't affect the gameplay too much, but it would be very weird if I didn't mention it here. Essentially, what I have done is accidentally set the endgame crisis strength to times one when I was meant to set it to times five. This happened because I wasn't paying attention when I restarted all of the different difficulty settings just to showcase how I was setting up the game, and then I simply didn't move the slider back to times 5. I don't notice this until the very end, and of course that means the end game threat is essentially nullified. Although I do make it 100 years earlier, it was still an absolute disappointment at the very end. Now thankfully, this game, this challenge, is more about the early game and the mid game, and less about the end game crisis, so that wasn't affected in any way. The difficulty for everything else is still on absolute maximum, and it was a really, really weird run. So weird in fact, with so many bizarre things happening, I will be redoing this challenge in the future with a few more things to make it even more difficult. So with that, I do apologise for the end game simply not existing, but this has been a really weird run which was super fun to record over the last few days. So thank you for listening, and now onto the greetings itself. Okay, one last thing. Also, because I wasn't overly clear with the rules and everything else of this challenge, they will be in the description and in a pinned comment, since I want to add to them with other ideas in the future. So, any challenge ideas in Stellaris, please feel free to tell me in the comments below. I feel like you can be extra cruel with these. Greetings, sir and sirette, and welcome back to Stellaris with me, Lathrex, and of course, welcome after a very long time to a brand new full playthrough episode. Today, we are going to be trying our very best to play as the most aggressive, yet the most adorable empire in Stellaris history. These are the geckos you can unleash upon the galaxy during an event in pretty much every playthrough. I think they always spawn somewhere in the galaxy, though I could be wrong there, they are certainly often seen... They're just adorable. Look at them. When you release them, they are fanatic purifiers. You can also have the event where you just keep them in their little shell, and they are also a reference to one of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy species, which literally are just in a bubble trapped in time. Now, to play this empire correctly, I am imposing one major rule on myself, which is going to make this game incredibly difficult. I must always be at war. If it's possible, I must be warring with another empire. Notice sitting around, gaining power and slowly building up our fleets, if we can attack an empire, even if it's much, much in their favour, we are going to be going to war. We are going to try and purify this galaxy for the glory of Gecko kind. And then probably turn in on ourselves and start destroying ourselves, but let's ignore that. At the moment, we're just purging the galaxy. So looking at the species itself, it's not the best. They do get some bonus minerals, but here's the thing. They are also decadent, so the workers which get the minerals are unhappy about it. They also don't like living together, and they are solitary. So, yeah, not the strongest species. In fact, one of the worst ones I've seen for a while, because they don't even use all of their trite points. So this is all we have to begin with. As soon as we have some gene technology, we really need to improve the geckos. Now, when it comes to government and ethics, I'm going with Imperial, because Blood Court, we are militarist, and we are fanatic xenophobes. So, loads of population growth, and we can expand incredibly easily, and our ships have a little bit of a bonus fire. Rate, which is further increased by the fact we are fanatic purifiers. This means we can't really engage in any form of diplomacy, but we do have the purification war type, which means when we go to war, we can simply take every single system we attack, rather than having to go through claims or anything like that. And then we also have cutthroat politics, which makes sense, considering apparently they hate themselves as well, which means our edict cost is minus 20%. It's not the most pleasant species, but it is adorable, and that's the important thing. With everything else, I've tried my best to replicate the empire within the game itself. So we have Reptilian 4, ship prefix is nothing. Our home planet is over there, there we go. And everything else, I think I've got correct. I may have missed one or two minor things, but for the most part, I've got everything important sorted out. So with that, and making sure it's correctly saved, Let's go. So what I would like is the endgame crisis to be 100 years earlier. We are going to have a medium galaxy, otherwise it would be way too dragged out. Difficulty is, of course, at maximum. We have the AI aggressiveness on maximum as well. And that's pretty much that. 
Wait, did Advanced Starts 1? I thought that was 2. Okay, let's just quickly reset to default. Okay, at some point I've messed around with that, so let me just redo all that, and I'll keep it as the default. Okay, so there we go. Now we have everything by default and then made difficult after that. So we do have more advanced starts, which is absolutely horrendous. It's already going to be incredibly difficult, and that's going to make it even worse. End game is 2,300 rather than 2,400. Yep, everything is as it is. And victory, uh, I want off because I've never really liked that much anyway. So, let's just begin. The start is going to determine the entire run. And so we begin on the left side of the map. So straight away, how are we going to play this? Because we have to be at war, as soon as we find another empire, we want to find the other empires quite slowly. Finding them early could potentially just end the run right there. So what we're going to do is make sure our science ships stay quite close to our borders. Although we need to expand incredibly quickly to get the resources we need, I don't want to find the enemies. So sticking close to the borders and expanding in a more natural sort of way, just a balanced way in every direction seems to be the best idea. Although, looking at our systems, we have a really good choke point right there. So that's nice, at least. Our home system is really, really easy to fortify straight away, which is lovely. Better shield straight away, some more unity, and coil gun? Sadly not. For now, though, more minerals might be more worth it. I needed to cough that entire time. Okay, so now I can talk again. I've changed my mind. Let's go with the better armor. So we have better armor and better shields for our corvette straight away, which is really, really helpful. So let's just make sure to survey everything around us and try to get some more planets as soon as possible and any high-density systems. So systems with loads of minerals and all that good stuff. Now the question is, how much should I rush into alloys? Because we need to be at war very early on, we are going to need a very good alloy production amount. But, if we don't have any research, our corvettes are going to be so weak it doesn't really matter if we have loads of alloys to spam them, because they're going to be destroyed at such a high rate, it'll be too expensive to really keep up. So what I'm thinking is one research labs and then straight into alloys, any new worlds might then go into research with only the home world focusing completely on alloys after that. But saying that, more alloys means we can expand incredibly quickly and just cover a huge space. Okay, first world, only alloys. After that, we move on and try and get some research and be a bit more balanced. That's what I'm thinking at least. Also, my mouse seems to be breaking at the moment. Which is always good. So, with our traditions, it's kind of difficult to decide between supremacy and expansion. The reason is supremacy gives us a flat 10% extra fire rate on our ships, which is amazing, and ultimately makes the whole waging war thing a lot easier. But, it doesn't do us any favours for our economy. Expansion makes everything a lot smoother, it means we're going to expand a lot quicker, and we're going to get the resources we need faster. I think expansion into supremacy, into domination, ignoring things like harmony, because that's a bit too good guyish. ish Saying that, getting supremacy early on would be fantastic, just to make sure we have it for when we find enemies. Nope, expansion is just too useful for what I'm planning to do. Economic policy, militarized, and food policy, nutritional plentitude at least for now. Happier geckos that breed faster, and more alloys for war. Even with that though, they're probably still not the happiest. No, 52%. They do not like being workers. Well, it's not the precursor I would have chosen, but there we go. That will eventually give us the ability to make Gaia Worlds, which is good, just not really that relevant to us. Now looking at our first leader, and honestly, it's not the best, but it's not the worst. Extra trade value, some mining station output, and some citizen happiness, which means that 52% happiness is with this bonus and with the extra food being consumed. Yeah, the geckos are just not going to be happy creatures. Hopefully, the factions are really aggressive, because that means we can make them happy very, very easily. It's probably safer to try and expand towards the edge of the galaxy. There's most likely enemies around here and here. Actually, no. For some reason, I thought we were closer to the edge of the galaxy than we are. Uh, it's still going to be a good chance there's someone here or here, but still. 
With these two curving around, I still feel like that's a bit safer. I proclaim superiority, giving me influence and xenophobe attraction. These geckos are getting more and more aggressive by the moment. And less friendly. Okay, so there's enemies here, so at least if there is something here, it won't be able to get through, at least for a while. So realistically then, this should be our choke point. And hopefully this is a dead end. So if there's not an empire here, we're actually in a pretty good position to fortify. Which is surprising, considering I can't really scout ahead from fear of finding other empires too early. Evasive maneuvers initiated. You are kidding me, we are completely trapped. If this doesn't go out now, we are actually trapped. On the upside, 905 is not too strong, so we can break through that as soon as we start building corvettes. But it also means we have a kind of safe haven to begin with, but that's really boring. That goes against the whole challenge of this empire, so don't worry. Once I expand through here, I will be breaking through. Not just sitting here safely, whilst most AI will just ignore this system because it has an enemy in it. As usual, we've managed to find the Rubricator. I think this has been in every single playthrough I've played since the Relics DLC. It is a truly fantastic bit of content, but it would be nice if some runs didn't have this world. Not that I'm going to complain right now though, considering the Relic world will give us loads of research. Well, we've been lucky so far, we still haven't found another Empire. Though honestly, I am getting a little bit worried now, it's going to be too long. I still want to be incredibly aggressive early on, but we don't really have the chance right now. Construct. Well, another enemy, so now we need to break through, so I think I'm going to break through over there and thus expand in this area as well. We've already gone to the left quite a bit, now let's go to the right. That wasn't the cleanest fight. Since we're using mostly coil guns and the enemy had no shields, that was pretty bad, honestly. But still, all worked out in the end, and I have loads of science ships now ready to, hopefully, find ourselves some new worlds. Some decent worlds. We have had an insanely lucky start here, which honestly is a little bit boring, but hopefully it'll get more interesting as time goes by. We have the ruined interstellar assembly here. Probably the worst of the ruined megastructures for us to find, because this makes other empires like us more. After we have a minus 1000 modifier, because, you know, we are fanatic purifiers. We'll kill them, but we'll kill them with a smile. So many tomb worlds, including a really good one over here. Tomb world, tomb world, and tomb world. We now have the relic. The last of the hive mind. And with this, we can turn one of our worlds into a Gaia world. For 150 influence. So, let's do that. Our home world is now beautiful. Oh! And we also get a couple of that species, which we are instantly going to destroy, giving us food, minerals, and unity. So we bring them back from the dead, and then devour them. Well, that's a nice little bonus, isn't it? <laughs> They're a nice salad. Here's a question. Can you turn worlds which aren't already inhabited into Gaia worlds? That's interesting. And in fact, what we could do is the next time that's almost off cooldown, we could grab one of these tomb worlds because it has such good planetary features and then convert it into a Gaia. At least I'm hoping you can convert a tomb straight into Gaia, because normally you need to turn a tomb into something else, then a Gaia. I guess we'll find out. Just as I run out of influence. Construction complete. Lovely. Construction Still complete. no other empires, though. Ooh, hello. Nope, sadly. Just you. So you fellows are defending a floating tree, which will allow our leaders to live longer. But, you're not moving towards us. Oh, now you are because of you. Uh, bugger. You run away. Fleet, deal with these fellows. 
Well, if you weren't running fast, that would have gone just fine. Construction complete. Now, at least you both survived. A 20 Gaia world being protected by multiple crystal fleets. That's interesting. At this point, it is getting a little bit ridiculous. We still haven't found another empire. I may need to do this challenge again in the future because finding an empire a little bit earlier than this is what's going to be the main challenge. But still, we, we do have the end game crisis incredibly early and we are the Fnatic Purifiers with a not so great starting empire. Still fun, just really surprising. Construction complete. Okay, that was the largest fleet dealt with, and not running into the others. Fantastic. And once again, the relic can be activated. So let's see. Can I convert worlds before we get there? No, so we've got to grab the world first. Is it worth the risk running over here? Grabbing this world and then hoping we can convert it into a Gaia world, just because it is such a good world in terms of its bonuses. Two metal graveyards, which basically give us plus 20% society research. Loads of mining space, irradiated valleys, impact craters, loads of good stuff there. Just making this an all-round good world. Then there's this world over here, completely filled with rare resources. I think it's worth it. Let's find out. Let's go with this one first. As soon as we have the stuff for it, that is. For now, let's just clear out this. We now have a new High Executioner, who has an eye for talent, who is an industrialist, and a reformer, so unity, minerals, and leader experience. Extra influence and extra xenophobe attraction once again. Well, here we go. Yep, you can indeed turn a tomb world into a Gaia world. And once again, it comes with free snacks who all simply wish to be fanatic pacifists. Wow. Venerable, agrarian, delicious, which is great for us, slow breeders, and communal. But most importantly, delicious, which essentially means they give us extra food. Oh no, only plus two if they are livestock. Does that mean if we're processing them or they're undergoing forced labor? I don't think... That bonus applies, right? Since that's a type of citizenship. Well, a type, a type of ownership, I should say. Oh well, at least I know they're delicious. I must have never played a Fnatic Purifier when I've had this event before. Normally, you could get a new leader, return them, or something else. In this case, kill them. Yep, we found one of their leaders in a skate pod. And we've simply removed them. More influence for us. Okay, so I was honestly about to consider restarting this map. The reason is, look at this start. It's just ridiculous. But now, I think I have to post this video because it is just so ridiculous. I have never, ever had such a safe start in any game I have ever attempted in Stellaris before. Look at this. We haven't found a single other enemy empire. The closest to a dangerous thing we found is the Marauders over here, which may become the mid-game crisis. That's it. And the problem is, we're even being blocked off here from a semi-aggressive fallen empire in the Spiritualist Empire. So, enemies aren't coming this way at all, and by the looks of things, there's nothing here because it gets blocked off, which means the only way I can find another empire now is either going down here, which by the way, is still blocked off, or go this way. So, I'm now forcing all of my forces this way, in hopes I will find another empire. I've got to put something about this in the title, or at least the start of the video, because this is just insane. An empire! We have found an empire! <laughs> Mushrooms, hello, hello! I think we found another empire then as well. Wow, you are both broken up horribly. That's beautiful. Why? Well, uh, closest one to us would be you. The Xeno Empire has somehow deciphered our language. 
We are now at war with three empires. Lovely. We're probably going to lose our main fleet, but they're so far away, we can start rebuilding now with Ernest. Oh, darn. There's an empire between us as well. Construction Wait, the horizon complete. signal? Really? Isn't that the one which ends with the worm? I mean, I'm okay if it is, to be honest. All glory to the worm. Oh, but look, I grabbed this system, but I can't get through. I don't have to be at war with everyone. Wow, you're fanatical purifiers. We have declared war on the abominable Xenos. System survey complete. <laughs> at last! We have claimed a new world. Wow. Um, we're doomed. Glory to the worm. Okay, uh, I'm going to build a star base here and start building up fleets to send across. That's fantastic. An enemy which can destroy us. Exactly what I wanted for Christmas. Construction complete. We're just being nuisances more than anything right now, but isn't it beautiful? Hello, Ziff. Wait, that's your homeworld? No, that's that's a homeworld there. That's just occupied. Okay, I was a bit confused there. There's your homeworld. Oh, a fleet. Goody. Hello, we're geckos. Ooh, another empire. Okay, for now, I'll avoid going to war with you as well. Although, you're a perfect target. Okay, we need some ground forces. I mean, we can actually just bombard planets, since we have the Armageddon Bombardment Stance, which literally destroys all life on the planet over time. But it would be nice to have some of these planets as our own. Ooh, and they are desert worlds. Uh, where's our closest planet? That would be you. Well, you, begin making the assault armies. Maybe we will go to war with these fellows. I wish I found them first. They're a perfect target. The Grand Executioner has perished. It is sad that they will not see our glorious conquest of the galaxy. Long live their heir, who is a champion of the people and has a home in the sky. And like science, we've had very few warmongering leaders, considering their title is High Executioner. A secondary fleet is almost ready. The first fleet is currently causing some havoc. Because everyone else is already fighting everyone else, we've come at just the wrong time for them. So even though we're not all that strong, they just can't deal with us right now. We're like an opportunistic infection. This poor fellow has a weakened immune system, and we are going to cause some havoc because of it. Glory to Nurgle, God of Flag. This is going to hurt us quite a bit, but if we take out this, we can grab this. Ooh, and there's a wormhole there. Lovely. Okay, they're getting ready to fight us back. Lovely. Just in time as well, because my second fleet is about to arrive to help out. Construction complete. So even if we lose this fight, it's okay. And we should have these active still, all the bonuses and the edicts. Construction complete. Oh yeah, our auto cannons right now are just devastating. So much damage. As soon as the armor's gone, the hull and the shield are just so vulnerable to our fleet. And they seem to be losing to our station. Okay, I mean, no complaints here. You did a little bit of damage, at least. And you are pretty badly damaged. Okay, you go back and repair. And then you can try to continue to take this area. You go over here, because clearly they're forcing us back in this section. So, send in our strongest fleet. We're going to gain a lot from this. Even if we stalemate now, we've already gained all of this foothold. And we're even gaining a world. Get our construction vessels over here soon, so we can make a bit of a bridge. The Decimators were asking for peace. 
And we are almost at 100% war exhaustion ourselves, because honestly most of the fights have been pretty balanced. And they're now sending in a 7k fleet over here, which could easily gut this entire section before I can respond. Okay, sure. So peace with you for now. We continue to be at war with the Combine, because honestly, as long as I can grab this system, which we're about to, which isn't the Decimators, we have easy access here. Then we can grab this and this. And whilst we are going to be at peace with the Decimators, we'll still be able to go through their borders for a short period of time. Yeah, this is fine. Want to grab those worlds. So you now are actually going to stay there, because I keep on seeing forces from over here coming over here as well. Though not at the moment. Um, you know what? Never mind. Health bombard. Go. The second I move away from here, as I was saying, occasionally forces come from this direction. And in this case, it's a mercenary group. And we are not strong enough to deal with that. Well, we are potentially, because of the bonuses we have as fanatical purifiers, don't always translate perfectly to fleet count. Sorry, to fleet power. So there is a potential we could just win this. But I'm not going to risk that. So you return to here at least. You go here and reinforce them. You are afraid are going to have to continue on your own. Xeno mongrels have declared war on each other. We have claimed a new world for our people. Begin bombardment. Actually, no need. Our ground forces are strong enough to deal with that all on their own. Begin just taking over, I guess. Hmm, that's a really weird shape for your empire to be. Is there another empire here I just can't see? We might meet another empire in a second. Complete. Anyway, you go over there. Take that station. Construction complete. We are going to happily take over the rest of their empire. Zeno land secure. Make sure to follow them, not go ahead, please. Thank you very much. Ah, that's why. Isolationists. If you were to grab one of these systems, they would declare war on you. Where did that fleet go? Okay, that fleet has moved away for reasons unknown to me. Sure. So this world here, Stargrove. That's a lot of unity and food and minerals we're devouring. I am happy with that. Just leave as it is for now, I suppose. Get some governors in a second once I'm done with this. Bliss. Once again, no need to bombard. We can just take it over. So, enter orbit. No need to take over straight away, because what I'd like to do is grab all these systems before they turn into neutral systems to make things a bit cheaper on us. Though saying that, looks like the decimators may get there first anyway. Harvesting Titanic life in the background, whilst hopefully we can reach them in time? Yes. Stragglers are destroyed. And we have some science vessels nearby, which is great, because there are loads of debris we really, really need the research from. This is going exceedingly well. We have grabbed the world. Apparently they have one more world left, though, over here. Well, two, I guess, but a system with worlds in is what I was talking about. Do I bother going over there, or should I just focus now on the larger enemy here? I suppose really the larger enemy should be what we go after next. And as soon as we can, go back to war with the Fanatic Purifiers. How long? Seven years. We could just wait around now. We are technically at war with two large empires. Well, one large empire and a few of its allies. We could just wait around for seven years, build up our fleets, and then destroy the decimators. In this time, we can sort out our consumer goods issues, we can start pushing some more research, and I think that would ultimately be the best thing to do, especially since how early the endgame crisis is going to occur. So for now then, just defend our borders, and build up our next attack. 
On a side note, for destroying the titans, we get this. Delicious titans. Max agricultural districts plus 8. Food from jobs plus 30%. Only a couple years have passed, and already we are now equivalent with the other fanatical purifiers in terms of our fleet power. This may be the highest difficulty, but apparently we have now caught up. And soon, we're going to be going straight after their homeworld. This is going to be a really messy war, but if we win this, we've essentially won, except the endgame crisis. This has been a weird challenge video, considering this was meant to be a challenge, but it's turned out into a more traditional fanatical purifier run. It begins, and annoyingly, we may end up losing some of these worlds over here purely because of these fellows. We can't get there, or at least we couldn't get there because of the borders closing, and, well, they're going to get there first. But, if we're lucky, we're about to take over loads of worlds from the fanatical purifier, so it doesn't really matter in the end. Sure, we'll lose some of our civilians, but I doubt we care. We don't seem the type to care. Construction complete. Construction complete. Hostile Xeno fleet. That's it. You keep on splitting up your fleet. That's always the best idea. Just gonna have to lose stuff over here, honestly. It's all for the best. We are building a new fleet, but slowly. Whoops. Hello. I can see the actual combat after it's already over. I'm a good cameraman. Hostile Xeno fleet detected. Oh dear, look at all those fleets. Xeno invaders are defiling one of our planets. What? Yeah, we really are losing these planets over here. There's nothing we can really do about it right now, though. Could lose some of our ground forces as well. That's fine, we can just obliterate these planets. Construction complete. Okay, so make sure you're all on Armageddon. Great. Say hello to the surface of that planet, would you? Our planet has been occupied by alien filth. We'll have revenge later once the fleet's ready. Oh, I forgot to land you as well. Well, I am just playing terribly right now, aren't I? Our smaller Guardian fleet is now in position and already helping us out quite a bit, but sadly some fleets have already got passed over here. I've eliminated one, but the second is going through. Now thankfully, they are really close to us so we can catch up with them and destroy them. What I need to do is put one of our fleets on a defensive sort of area, just here, or maybe even patrolling between these two areas. Otherwise, this is going to be taken, then retaken over and over again. But what we really need to do is some more permanent damage. I almost completely destroyed the world, bringing it down to only 11 pops, so 50% of it was destroyed. But then I had to move backwards. So, yeah, what we need to do is split up our fleets a bit, just making sure we have just about enough to guarantee victory against any single of their fleets. At the moment, though, we're in a really good position, so, yeah. Just a bit of micromanaging. On the upside, with the enemy fracturing their fleet so much, it means we're constantly fighting them with us having the fleet advantage. On the downside, they're attacking from absolutely everywhere. And because we currently don't have the tech to stop enemies going past our stations, well, defense fleets are really fantastic right now, as I was mentioning before. You stay there, you go around there. We need to take this to stop them from respawning here. Plus, it is their home world, so... That is a good target. Hello, enemy homeworld. You no longer have any soldiers here, and a lot of your people are dead, but now you're mine. And you're going to be a Gaia world. Just because we don't like your continental worlds all that much. That's fine. 
just a speed up growth here. There we go, and I've got two of you. Oh, I forgot just how many we end up putting there. Okay, so that's a mistake on my part. I completely forgot you get a lot of new citizens when you take over planets. For some reason, I thought we only got one. As in a normal colony before any upgrades. Yeah, we can take that as well. There we go. So we can grab those two and we will convert that world when we have the relic up and running again. I've had to reinforce this fleet many times now. We keep on losing ships just about as fast as I can make them. And actually, you're getting worn down now as well. But still, we're doing okay. We've got their capital. We've lost these two worlds over here, but we can grab them back later when we go back to war with these fellows. That is a nice station. Ooh, what mega structure is there? A ruined science nexus. Now that I would like. That's a problem, though. Rebuilding our fleet way too slowly. Actually, no, we're not. Never mind. Okay, yep, you go there right now. Take back a little bit of that space. We've already taken their home world, two other worlds. We're about to take another world. Going to take this station, which is a big investment of theirs. Hopefully take that world as well. If we can take all of this, then this has been a major blow to them. And we are continuing to expand into this area as well. Soon half the map will be ours. Incoming transmission. Well, we're about to be forced out of war right now, which is really annoying. Because honestly, we don't have anyone else we can go to war with who's close enough by to make any difference. We currently have a peace treaty with these fellows, which means we're also at peace with these. And we can't declare war on either of those. And there's one other group, I can't remember which, which I also can't declare war because of that same group. So for the next three or four years after this war, I just can't really declare war on anyone meaningful. I'll still declare war on someone to cite the needs of always being at war, but still. Peace was forced upon us, though we've done incredibly well. We've took out so many of their worlds that now they only have one, two, three, four worlds left? No, just three, I think. Just three worlds and that's it, and then the fanatical purifiers are destroyed. The problem is, some of these empires are actually incredibly scary. Yeah, superior, overwhelming, equivalent, but then loads of um, better techs as well. So, we have a couple of years until we can go to war, and of course, as soon as we can, we will. In that time, just keep on building up the fleet and trying to figure out how I'm going to even attack them. I was hoping to claim this area before the end of the war, but sadly, status quo is status quo. Finally, we have the tech to improve the geckos, which is so, so useful. Let's improve their happiness to begin with. Then, I would love actually anything here. In comparison to how they were, almost everything here would be great. How about extra tech and extra unity right now? Finally getting some tech behind us would be fantastic. And unity's always good. Lifespan's good, specific research is good though, extra growth speed, adaptability, extra amenities, there's so many things here I really, really want. But for now, I think I'll go with that. The geckos are evolving. Oh, that's painful. But worth it. We have found the new relic. Oh, it's this one. So I've had this one before. Essentially, what it is, there we are, is that we can get a small fallen empire fleet. They're not particularly that powerful, and I might just keep on going with this to get more Gaia worlds, but it is a nice option. It's a shame we are the fanatic purifiers, because otherwise these people would have actually liked us. Which would be nice. Oh, okay, so even though we are fanatical purifiers, they now like us. Which means we can now go around here. If they ever open their borders. Will you ever open your borders to us? Would be nice. We are the chosen, apparently. Maybe one day. We are still under our truce with the Decimators, but we can indeed now go to war with the Hierarchy. So, whilst you're warring with other people, we have declared war on the let's attack you. Weapons. Because why not? Okay, all of you go over there and get ready. How are they going to attack us back? Honestly, that's really the only direction they can attack us from, which is great. They have some forces here which are about to come hostile, I think. Yep, there we go. So I guess what we should do instead is get ready here. 
They will crush that fleet, take over this planet, which is a pretty good planet, with lots of people to purge. Then we can move on to this planet. If we can just grab these two systems, this war will be a huge success. At the moment, though, what I'm really trying to focus on is finally sorting out our own systems. I've messed up the trade lines, I've messed up some of the planets, and now I'm really trying to fix those. Lots of micromanaging, which will end up in the video. We have mastered a new technology. Finally, there we go. More clerks everywhere, so hopefully... We'll have less. Yep, there we go. Unemployment is no longer an issue. Everyone gets to work in an office. Poor geckos. The butcher. There we are. That'll help out when we eventually land. Construction complete. The moment, though. Let's just do some damage so we don't lose all of our ground forces. But saying that, just sitting here is going to waste our time. You know what? Sure. I believe in you, ground forces. Then that way, our army can move on out. Our fleet can move on out. Hopefully some of our ground forces survive, because honestly, all of the worlds here are quite weak. So as long as they have 200 plus, lovely, which we do. Move over there, and we can take all of their worlds automatically. Sadly, the butcher apparently died. Hostile Xeno fleet engaged. Quite weak, and... Ooh, a habitat! Well, that'll be ours soon. Let's see if we can take this area over here, and then, once we focus on the purifiers again, we can try and grab at least this section, and so... Our weird border continues to expand. It is pretty weird. Although it's expensive, what I've started to do now is moving every single Xeno over to Gish. The reason is, if we have them all in one place, it'll be a much slower process in terms of purging them, and our stability is still fairly high, which does, I believe, affect purging resources? It might not, but either way, it's still a better idea, because only one is killed at a time, and we have loads of them all in line to be destroyed, which means we'll have more minerals and food for a longer time. In fact, that's one of the reasons that nihilistic acquisition is so powerful, especially in the early game, where you can stack up loads and loads of Xenos in one place, and then slowly deplete them whilst getting the resources from all of them. Really should have been doing that earlier, but I didn't really think about it all that much. But I am now. So it turns out that, yep, stability does indeed affect the resources you get from purging, which means I really should have been doing this way earlier on. Look at that, that is lovely, and that's just getting started. The other empires are finally sending some help to their allies, but I don't really care. I'm just going to go straight for the homeworld. At this point, we've all but destroyed this empire, so it's not really going to be a threat to us. And I need to start replenishing our forces, because next we go after the purifiers again and hopefully connect all this up. Hundred and twenty-six Xeno populations here. Yeah. Well, this might be one of the first fights we lose. Nope, just about winning. Okay, but either way, it's heavily hinting we need to get out of here. I've also been obliterating a lot of the colonies, and what I need to do is start removing districts, which we're not currently using. Remember, we have moved away pretty much all of the purging populace, which are now all the way over here in our home world. Meaning that these actually have very low populations, but we're still keeping up the upkeep of all of these districts, which is killing our energy. Loads of food, loads of minerals, just our energy is really suffering. Okay, now we have status quo, it's time to attack the purifiers, and here's something I've just noticed. The purifiers only have the worlds over here, so if we take this, 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 and this, they gone. And that's a good thing. So we can easily remove them from the game very easily. So we have the main fleet over here ready, which includes some of the Fallen Empire ships we got from the Relic. Got a new fleet over here being created. They're about to position themselves over here, so they can just rush straight over and then attack these two. 
and our ground forces are with them, so you two just deal damage, you actually start taking over the worlds, and then we get more things to purify, we get more unity, everyone in the galaxy rejoices. Once again, the AI doing a terrible job here. They have a fleet here, which would easily be strong enough when combined with all of these to take out this fleet, and only now are they moving against us, after I've done substantial damage. I already removed one fleet, these fleets are running away, and now I'm going to back off. And that was a mistake on my part, they could have easily took me out, but because they were so slow to respond, we're just going to destroy that, run away, and then regroup. Okay, you take out that, then you can go around here, and you can start destroying them from the left. The other great thing with removing all the population so that we're simply purifying all of the Xenos in one place, is that it also automatically destroys the colony, so we're just leaving these barren worlds behind with ruins all over them. It's kind of fantastic, honestly. Construction complete. Construction complete. Invading Xeno lair. The only other world they have is the one over here, and I'm currently just bombarding it and slowly killing its populace. The Great Purge is underway. We will be the only purgers here. Purifiers is the word I was looking for there. Construction complete. Words are difficult. Construction complete. The exterminators have been removed, and our borders now look even worse. <laughs> Seriously, looking at this is quite atrocious. On top of that, the fanatics over here, the spiritual fallen empire, have now fully awakened and are attacking their neighbours. Thankfully ignoring me at the moment, but eventually they will attack us, and I can't see how I could possibly defend against them. So for now, just going to ignore that. That's a problem for future Lathrix. However, we must always be at war. This is the rule, and going to war with someone really far away is kind of cheaty, so that's not going to happen. We are going to be attacking the Trade Commission, which I believe is actually the most powerful regular empire at the moment. <laughs> well, this can only end well. We have declared war on the Everyone, please get over here as soon as you can. You, on the other hand, really need to heal up and get reinforced, so go over there to our main station. And let's start taking some of these systems, because otherwise it's going to annoy me. Wait a second, I forgot! I am the chosen one! They might not attack me! Yeah, you're just arrogant! You're not hostile! Ha! <laughs> They're on our side! That's glorious! What weapons are they using? I swear I'm just losing ships, but my shields aren't going down? Yeah, they're using disruptors, I assume that. So, like, just disruptors and lasers, that is a weird combo. Well, that explains why well, they're not getting through our shields, like, at all. But then occasionally one of our ships dies because their, ooh, their disruptors all focus on them. Xeno fleet detected. Well, that had gotta hurt. And now we are equivalent. Fantastic. So, move out. Let's start taking their world. Ooh, their capital. I really should start calling it capital and not homeworld, because your capital isn't necessarily what your homeworld was, it just is by default. But if you lose that world or move it, wow, that is a really good world. Let's take it. 
I was laughing at the AI being silly and I've just done the exact same thing. This fleet is way too far ahead of these two. This one really should have been following along. Because of that, we've lost loads of ships straight away before the other two could reinforce. Still a landslide victory, but once again, losses which did not have to happen. Construction complete. We have mastered a new technology. Construction complete. And that is their ally and all of its force. Uh, we should win that, but it's going to be close. We do have a backup fleet on its way, but that's going to take way too long. I might need to retreat for now. Though I am going to lose these. Yeah, there's no way they're escaping this system without them catching up, but I will try. There's no point in us just accepting it. Construction complete. Okay, one got caught off, so you two help it out. One of our stations is under attack. Okay, we are going to just about win this, but once again, nowhere near enough to stay here. So you, just go there, and I'll keep on building the fleets. I currently have one shipyard building. Oh yeah, I actually ran out of alloys. I did have two building at one point. Well, they've forced us back. We can do status quo at any given time, but our rules are very clear. We must always be at war. I guess I could just go to war with these fellows and finish them off. That would be an easy thing to do whilst we recover. That's exactly what I'm going to do. So you and our new, much smaller ground force, go ahead and follow along. We'll take out the rest of the hierarchy. No elves over here? Excellent. Sadly, though, we currently have a truce of these fellows, and the only other people we can go to war with is this empire over here, which currently have open borders with the spiritualist empire because they just lost a war. Which means if we go to war with these, they're going to attack us and do damage over here, where I have no protection and currently have no gateways because of my lack of tech. So what I'm going to do is run away this fleet... Merge with this fleet, which will give us just about enough strength to deal with this federation. Nope, that's not even a federation fleet. It's just bloody terrifying. We just need to hold out for two more years, then the truce is over, then we can go to war with the hierarchy again. That's the current plan. They caught up with our fleet. But thankfully, their battleships are pretty terrible. In fact, most of them are. So we have better quality ships. So even though we're losing, we are taking out loads of theirs. Okay, you're strong enough to deal with this now, because honestly, the last fleet almost did, but let's not bother. Let's just defend our borders. Hopefully, they'll return home now to heal. Yes, they will. Fantastic. Okay, the truce is almost over, thankfully. It seems like the enemy are trying to attack us by going around here, since I have no defense here. Honestly, not a terrible move. But because that took so long, we can set up status quo... And go straight back to war. So I'm moving my fleets now into position. And as soon as they are, status quo will be active. Now the problem is, going to war with them now would mean going to war with the second strongest regular empire. So it's still going to be a pretty big fight. They have one world here, then three over here. No, just two. Okay, so two there, one there. And then we can remove them from the game. So far, it's been really clean. I've only had one very small attack from the main enemy over here, and we've taken over all of this land already. We've taken over this section, completely removed one of the empires, and now we're moving to the last world. At least that's what I thought, until I saw that, yep, they'd finally got a world over here as well. So I'm building up a small fleet, because for some reason, this is currently offline. Don't know why it is. One of the other empires must have started the event, so... 
Whilst it is offline, since I think eventually it will come back online, I'm building up a small fleet here that's gonna run all the way over, straight past, and just bombard this world until it no longer exists. Ooh, I've just grabbed that world. Fantastic. There we are. And I just accidentally moved one of those geckos, didn't I? Oh well. Geckos get moved everywhere. On other news, since I have been trying to micromanage my worlds this entire time, but I'm probably only showing some of the warfare elements because there is so much going on with all of the worlds I'm trying to manage, I have finally got the tech to upgrade our buildings. So now almost all of our buildings are being upgraded, our alloys are going through the roof, and even our research is increasing at long last. The problem is we have just over 20 years and then the endgame crisis can potentially spawn. What I'm hoping will happen is it spawns over here, then we have this and this as a bit of a shield, and that's just about it. Wait, you three aren't owned by them, are you? Let's have a look-see. So, you. Yes, the fanatics are taking over everyone. That's a problem. So if I go to war with you now, okay, good. Even though you have pledged your loyalty, I can still attack you on your own. Fantastic. Well done, fanatics. So glad you like me. This has been a weird run. Get away from my planet. I stole that fair and square. The Xeno invasion attempt has been thwarted. Okay, take out you, though you're about to grab that station, so you might run away. Then go back here. It seems like they're going this way, the, what looks like the long way, but actually it's about the same distance, so that's fair. Don't really need anything over here anyway, so yep, yours now on protection duty. That fleet is almost ready and strong enough, so I'll start moving it anyway, just so I can get through. And just keep surviving. Wow. You are going to take over all of this, aren't you? Okay, in that case, let's grab a couple of construction vessels and start building here before they can. Beginning bombardment of their planet, they have only three populations anyway. That will be removed very quickly. Over here, we're defending against multiple attacks. We lost some space, but we're now regaining it. Then I need to decide how I'm going to deal with all this. Right now, the one I see, I'm just focusing on the planets more than anything. Wow, 3k research in this year. That is really bad, but at least it's going up quickly. The hierarchy has been removed from existence. Wonderful. So what do we do now? We could send some of our fleets into their territory, because honestly, they've kind of lost a lot against us. It's been bizarre, this fight has, yeah. It's like they were split into 20 or 30 really, really small fleets, and it just kept attacking me all over the place, but because I had all of this already in place, they just sort of destroyed themselves. Well, may as well then. We can't go this way because the fanatics own a little bit of space there. They still don't seem to really hate us, which is great because we are the chosen ones. So, sure. Move into their territory. Once this war's over, we can go back to war once again with the commission and then we've sort of wiped out this entire area. Just to prove my point, 700 fleet power, 700 fleet power. They keep on doing this. Well, works for me. Just to really prove my point. It's like they're trying to reinforce something which doesn't exist. This is the most bizarre behaviour I have seen from any AI empire. I have never seen them split everything up. It's as if they're creating the ships and then sending them forward, like I said before, as if they're reinforcing something which isn't there. And because of that, they've just lost everything. We have now finished off Discovery, which means we are grabbing Evolutionary Mastery. Beautiful. So with that, what we want to research straight away is this. Genetic resequencing, which will unlock the advanced traits. Soon our geckos will be very, very powerful. Well, we've been forced back by a 34k fleet. All healed up. Wonderful. Let's go get them. Hostile Xeno fleet detected. Well, we lost a fair bit, but we ultimately won. 
Okay, I'm just gonna leave you, since you're not really strong enough to deal with any of our main stations. Do that, and then... Reinforce. The new technology. So, after a while of fighting them, it turns out they do actually have the ability to defend themselves quite well. My two fleets are now massively weathered down, and honestly, I can't get all that many reinforcements. Oh, and we're about to lose another system. My reinforcements over here, though, are over four times as strong as the fleets which are left over there. So what's going to happen is we're going to two status quo, since we are now superior in terms of fleet power, so they're more than happy for that to happen. Then we're going to once again go to war with the commission. Just attack them straight away over here, hopefully taking out two of their worlds quickly. Now at war with our original enemies, and we're going straight for their homeworld if at all possible. There's some decent fleets over here, which should apply a lot of pressure, though, so at very minimum, we are going to do some extreme damage. Also, it turns out, these are not our friends. They may like us, but they still want to take us over. Lovely. Now, you need to go over here, because there are a lot of places to invade here. I can see why they're doing so well in terms of their economy. They are really focusing on habitats, and the habitats are actually quite far along. At least based on all that lovely trade value. Okay, you're trying to attack there, you back off so you can be reinforced by that, still making more of a fleet there. So we're dominating over here, but we're in danger over here, okay. Also, the Fanatics took this area. Okay. The Fanatics are doing a great job of grabbing absolutely everything, so now this little bit over here is also under the Fanatics' control. In fact... I don't quite know how they've done it. I haven't seen a single one of their construction vessels, yet they now have that space. But I know they definitely use construction vessels, so... I'm just confused more than anything, to be perfectly honest. Oh, now I'm actually paying attention. It's because the Fanatics are also at war with the Commission. That also explains why I haven't been running into all that much in terms of fleet power. At this rate, the Fanatics might end up taking over the entire galaxy. Yet another world is now under our control, which means let's move all of these lovely undesirables over to our home world. Which means now we have a grand total of 590 undesirables. That is so weird. So, they have been vassalized by the fanatics, but we did not enter a truce because of this. So I can just go right back to war. That's fine. We have declared war on the foul Xenos. So, as I were. Our invasion has slowed down quite a bit at the moment. The enemy do have some decent fleets going around, and occasionally I actually have lost a fleet. But also, their ground forces are quite good as well, so everything is just slowing down to a halt. On the upside, though, once I grab this planet, that's 116 more populations for us. Our fleets are now looking way better in terms of strength, and that's because now we have the spinal mount weapons, which are the large weapons for battleships, but also we have the repeatables now finally underway. If you have a quick look, yep, extra energy attack weapon speed, we're about to get the larger of the cannons, everything is looking up. Our geckos have now also been fully upgraded, so we are getting more research, we are now at 7k, which isn't particularly fantastic for our Empire Sprawl, but at least we're getting all the necessary stuff. Soon, we may have to fight the Fanatics, and that means we need at least one group of ships with over 200k fleet power. That way, we can hopefully just grab one fleet at a time and destroy them. It also means we really need anti-shield stuff, because they really, really love their shields. The endgame crisis is also going to occur soon, which I'm really hoping spawns here, because that would be perfect. The Fanatics would fight them, the Fanatics would lose, but it would weaken the endgame crisis. But yeah, we need all of our stuff upgraded fully before that happens, and that's going to be in three years. Well, the minimum is in three years. 
I don't know if we're going to win this, honestly. So, I just messed up and almost got my fleet killed. The reason why I didn't get killed is because of this. I don't quite understand what they're trying to do. They must be getting one order, then the next, instantly? Because what happened was, I accidentally moved my fleets into here, misreading how much fleet power they had. I then started to run away, and they just started dancing at me angrily. System survey complete. Okay, I've been watching this way too long. Oh look, we're now at 8k research. Our ships have been upgraded. Two years until the end of the galaxy. And we have Empire Sprawl, which is just terrifying. Science is going just fine. I wonder how many we now have on the homeworld. Hello, homeworld! Almost 1,000! Little bit insane. Finally, our ships are starting to look like proper in-game ships. Still not there yet. But at least we're moving in the right direction. I've also completely ignored techs, which would unlock some of the next levels of the computer, because I'm just that silly. I am really confused about the combination of weapons the enemy use. Still managed to kill quite a few of our ships, though. System survey complete. These two fleets couldn't fuse before, they certainly will be able to now. Construction complete. There we go. Okay, grab adaptability, and now we are definitely going to need Defender of the Galaxy. This is our galaxy, we're not giving it up. That's the only chance we have right now against the Endgame Crisis if it spawns very, very soon. Probably not going to use Titans. So, I now think I understand why we have not been at war yet with the Awakened Empire. It's not because we're the Chosen Ones, as much as I choose to believe that's the case. It's because I can't request to become one of their Dominions whilst I'm at war. And I believe they can't demand it of me if I'm at war as well. And because that's all they want, they literally can't declare war with us because of that. And that is weird. Because, well, I guess they could declare war, but they don't hate us. So they won't declare war to attack us or destroy us, but they want to declare war to try and control us. But they can't get the ability to do that without first demanding it. Similar to if I demanded another empire to become my vassal. That is bizarre. But I think that may be what's happening, because they were overwhelming for a very long time. Only now are we equivalent, because I've got decent tech, and I have three star bases working constantly making battleships. Yeah, not having access to the galactic market is horrible, and it makes things very cheap very fast, as you can see. But it also means you can occasionally buy alloys, because they're not constantly being inflated by other empires. So once in a while, I've been able to get several thousand alloys and make an, an additional few battleships. And doing that over and over again, plus our very good alloy production, we've actually got some decent fleets coming together. Now, admittedly, 62k isn't a particularly powerful fleet, and over 65k, and that's with all the bonuses. So we are still very weak per ship but we have the ability to produce lots of them. And very soon we can make wormholes, say wormholes, gateways, which we need drastically. Thankfully now I can explore wormholes, so I at least have access to that. For instance, I can now move things from here to here, which is actually really useful. But gateways, I need gateways everywhere. I mean, look at my empire. And I'm slowly filling in all the gaps as well. As you can see, all my construction vessels are actually doing something. Just thought I'd have a bit of a recap right now, since it's been almost five years in game where I haven't talked once because it's just been micromanaging and keeping these fellows at bay. Oh, their fleets are gone now. Okay, so, I've also been a little bit scared to overextend because of the whole endgame crisis thing, but I think it's about time we crush this empire, then move on to the Union over here. Who are also very strong, actually. Huh, interesting. I love cannons in this game. Just the visuals of it.
We're great versus shields and large targets, and terrible versus anything with anything but shields. And small targets, and currently we're facing very balanced enemies with lots of small targets. Construction complete. Essentially, I'm building these up to be anti-Endgame Crisis and anti-Awakened Empire. So many small targets, so many cannon shots going wildly off target. You can really see why I've left Harmony to last. The greater good. Yep, that's totally us. Construction complete. All that's left is enemy corvettes. And we just can't hit them. Complete. Please stop firing at their transport vessels as well. That doesn't help. We have mastered a new technology. I've changed my mind. We go to glory versus the other fallen empire. The militant isolationists. They want war. We want war. Let's have war. We have declared war on the vile Xenos. This could end so badly, so quickly. Hang on, what are they doing? Are they not going to defend near their station? If not, then I'm okay with that. Ah, too bad, we're already at war. Well, we're already fighting, I should say. This is where the cannons are going to be fantastic. Large targets with lots of shields. How fast was that one fleet? Blood for the blood god and all that. Note to self, pay more attention to the speeds of your fleets. Construction complete. Lovely. The core and boundary. So to stay there and use their own station against them. Begin bombardment. These are the main planets we're after anyway. Didn't even really catch that fight. We're just going to obliterate them. Well, it certainly shows we can defeat one of the Awakened Empire's fleets one-on-one. -on -one. Fear us. Cannons may not be the best in many, 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 many circumstances, but they'll always be my favourite in this game. Huh, but that missile missed. Good. Putting the missing missile, eh, enemies? And now we proceed to miss for eternity. Stop moving around! Or at least move away in a straight line so we can aim at you easier. Thank you! Now heal up. That'll be the third station these have taken down without losing a single ship. Since I just healed between them. So, Lathrix, you've been bombarding these planets with your Armageddon stance the entire time. Is there any problems with doing this? Oh yeah, you've destroyed almost every single population. Whoops. <laughs> Three left. Which means all of these incredibly powerful buildings are now offline and you need to repopulate the entire planet. I guess I'll just move some geckos over because these buildings really are that powerful. We need these. Produces 250 energy, just passively. Yeah, I want that, thanks. At least with this one, we haven't gone so far. We're about to start invading it, so... <laughs> when you want to keep everything operational, maybe that's not the best idea. Though I suppose I would be destroying the populations anyway, but still... 
That's a lot of resources wasted for a while. Of course, the main reason we went to war with the Fallen Empire is because of this. We now have all of that lovely Fallen Empire tech, which means we have the Dark Matter Deflectors, we have the Dark Matter Reactor, and the Dark Matter Thrusters. All incredibly powerful. Whilst all that's been going on, I have been removing the populations from the other planets, just to make things a bit easier. Just one world left. Then after that, we go after the Union. In case you're wondering why the enemy wasn't fighting back, they actually were and they took all of these systems. The problem is, when it comes to a fallen empire, all they want to do is humiliate you, even if you're one of the purifier empires. So normally, a regular empire or an awakened empire would have end threat, which means they can take systems just like we can. But a fallen empire doesn't follow that rule. So we can just sort of hit them and they don't really hit back. They pretend to, but they don't. Really, we should be facing off against the Fanatics now. They are the only real threat left, and to be perfectly honest, our ships do naturally counter theirs, and their ships are everywhere, so they're not in one centralized location. We could quite easily take their home world right now, but here's the thing. I still don't know when the endgame crisis is going to occur, so instead, we're gonna keep on bullying the smaller empires. But now I've said that, my entire empire is now battleships which are made to face off against an endgame crisis or the Awakened Empire. They're going to be hard countered by all of these corvettes. So, to save us from that, I am trying to build a more balanced fleet over here, but it will take a little while. But still, we can just sit here and do a little bit of damage, since I doubt they'll go headlong into all of these battleships. Turns out I didn't need to be worried. I wasn't really paying attention, but we just won two fights. We lost a couple of things, but not much. So in that case, let's move up. Construction complete. Would have been smart to send in the ground forces as well. Bravest five corvettes ever. Maybe also the stupidest. With enough shots, anything is possible. I now realise that may sound like I'm condoning alcoholism. I'm just talking about guns. Much safer. The first Arcology project is now underway on the homeworld. I am really keen to see what it's like since they've been nerfed, and some of you need to move out now. This has been a surprisingly difficult fight, though to be fair, most of my ships are still being held back just to be upgraded. And now, they even have Sapiens combat computers. About halfway through controlling their empire. So, whilst I've been attacking all of the other empires, I completely forgot that we were still at war with this empire down here, and they've managed to regain a little bit of space. Not much, they're still pretty much suppressed down here, but yeah. That's kind of annoying. And now I've gone back to slowly claiming systems as well, so it, our borders will look a little bit less insane. As you can probably tell by how I'm talking, honestly, I am incredibly tired. This entire week has been really weird for me in terms of having basically no time to record, and this is the one chance I had, and well, just about falling asleep now. So soon it'll be the next recording session, which makes it the third recording session so far. Well, the next one will be the fourth, this is the third. There we are. And this one as well, I think. Oh no, this is a Gaia world. We are keeping that. It's also the one from earlier, so yeah, we're definitely keeping that. Now we have a grand total of... 1,498 undesirables. This is interesting. Time to do some science. Once we take over the system, will I automatically get this upgrading? I'm hoping so, because that way I don't need to learn about mega structures, and I get it for free. Well. We thank you for this contribution to our empire, O oh glorious union. When did you build?
build this? Before I forget again, you do indeed get to keep the mega structure in its building state if you grab it whilst it's still being built, which means it will continue to be built all by itself for free, which is pretty darn amazing. On top of this, I have now went ahead with the sentient perks, and I have now grabbed Galactic Contender, meaning we do an extra third damage to Awakened Empires, just to make sure that the Awakened Empire really isn't a threat anymore. It's just going to be annoying. When it comes to the fight now, yep, the Awakened Empire is now inferior to us in terms of its fleet power. Its fleet is spread out, it doesn't seem to be wanting to upgrade its fleet in any way, and we do bonus damage to it. Really now, we are just waiting for the endgame crisis, which is surprisingly light. It occurs to me at this point, if the endgame crisis is the Scourge, which it very well might be considering how light the endgame crisis is right now, then we're kind of doomed. The reason is, these weapons are terrible versus the Scourge, since the Scourge have such high armor values, and the Scourge either ignore or are very effective versus shields depending on the size of the Scourge enemy. That's horrendous for us as well, because we are mostly shields, so these battleships will just be crushed. So, what I think I need to start doing is making some of these. Now, these are purely anti-armor, and they only use armor themselves. Terrible versus things like the Unbidden, but much better versus the Scourge. Now, what I really should do is go for just anti-everything. Things like the Archimeter, which goes through armor and shields and only hits hull. The problem is I don't have access to the Cloud Lightning, which means... Only half of the damage of the ship will go through it all, and that can be a bit weird, and honestly, I just don't like it. That's the main thing, I just don't like how that all looks and how it all works together. So I should make at least a couple of fleets of these, just to make sure I have at least some super effective weaponry. For every other endgame crisis though, this will do the job just fine. It will blast through shields and it will blast through hull, which is the main component of most of the endgame crisis. I think maybe the contingency might be okay versus this, but still, not horrendous. Yep, I knew it was going to be them. Okay, so the enemy which are approaching rapidly are the Scourge. The Scourge are going to absolutely devour our ships. Now, thankfully, we have a lot of ships. Like, a stupid amount of ships, so losing some, not really a big deal, all future ships will be outfitted with anti-armor properties. I still don't know if that'll be enough though, if we can catch them straight away, if they spawn somewhere near here, or somewhere we can get easy access to them, then fine. I didn't manage to get the tech for gateways, which is really annoying because I have messed up the science so badly throughout this gameplay. I think this may be one of the worst gameplays I've ever done, but we've won anyway because of the amazing start. Weird video. Had a lot of fun though. But yeah. It's the Scourge, because I believe there is a increased chance of the Scourge being your enemy if a lot of time has passed from the potential of the endgame crisis spawning. It's like my brain's in slow motion at the moment. I keep on thinking of a sentence really slowly. Anyway, now we wait, and the endgame crisis will occur. We're just about to finish off this next empire. We devoured one, and we're sort of devouring the second. We almost look like the Paradox logo. You know, the ones who make Stellaris? Almost. Just like on its side, so the head's here, well, flip, so the head's here, then there's the tail. Yeah, looking at the image, almost. We have 191 of our geckos on our lovely upgraded world, which is now just a giant city. Over here. And we have a grand total of, you know, 1,997 undesirables. Basically, what I'm trying to say is the buildings are made out of living undesirables. Their cars are undesirables. Everything in this society is built with those mushrooms. And the more you actually think about that, the more horrific that is. With most of this empire cleaned up, except for some sections I can't get to without warring with the fanatics, which obviously I don't want to do right now considering the whole endgame crisis is on the horizon, I've decided to go back to war with these fellows so we can start cleaning up down here instead. Including one of my ships teleporting right into their territory, because why not? The breach point has been located, all of my fleets are now moving in. Hopefully it'll give us a little bit of time before they arrive so our fleets are actually in position. 
There's one useful wormhole in the way, and it's not that long a distance, but it's still going to be a couple of years before all my fleets are in position. This is why gateways are good. And actually researching them. And making sure you have all the prerequisites, which it turns out I didn't. Well, here they are already. Hang on. One of our spaceports is under attack. Thirty four thousand. That's not right. I just spent the last half an hour trying to figure out a way to increase the crisis strength because I was looking at the original footage because I haven't started editing this yet and it's about 19 hours of raw footage of just gameplay and yeah, I completely mess up straight away at the start. I accidentally leave the crisis strength at times one, essentially nullifying the crisis. I still make it far earlier, which technically makes it more difficult, but I've essentially removed the end threat from the game. Now, there's been many times I've played this game and I've ended up just quitting the game before the end game crisis spawns because we've ended up steamrolling so much. And honestly, this was one of those times. We were at the point where we would have utterly devastated the Scourge, even though we had the wrong ship type. We were just far too powerful at that point. I don't really think the Scourge would have stood a chance, but it might have, and I've removed that, and that is beyond annoying, especially to me, so I can only apologise. I will be redoing this challenge again. I've, I've had a load of fun, despite the fact it seemed like I'm quite low energy throughout the entire gameplay, and that's because life at the moment has been a little bit brutal over the last few weeks, and this was a good, just relaxing game, and I honestly just wanted to do a bit of a challenge. So I really do hope you've enjoyed the video. I do apologise so much for what's happened there at the end. I will be doing it again, and I will be sure to check the crisis strength. So, I'm ending it here. There are no real threats left in the galaxy. The geckos have reign supreme. And I will return with much higher difficulty. Thank you so, so much for watching. If you have enjoyed the video, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that Stellaris is a series you wish to see continued in the future. Even when it's played by a derp like me. Thank you so much for watching. And goodbye.